Hey everybody, welcome to Budget Magic. This is the official first episode of Budget Magic, brought to you by, well, just me, Making Smart Plays, uh, aka Birdman, and uh, yeah, there's there's nobody else, so I just do this for funsies, and don't have any sponsors, don't really want any, just, just doing it for the people. Anyway, today we're going to start down an interesting path. We're going to talk about how you take $10, that's it, no more, just 10 bucks. you buy yourself a Magic Online account, and without putting any more money in, with a lot of time and diligence and patience, you create a thousand dollar Magic Online account. I'm not saying you're going to be able to do this overnight, it's not going to be instantaneous, it's not going to be without work, but this particular strategy is for two types of people, and it's also not for one other type of person. Let's talk about that first. We're going to look at three categories of people, and we're going to start out with one premise, okay? That premise is this. In the world of Magic, there's, there's two important factors to look at how much time you have and how much money you have. If you're somebody that has a lot of money but not very much time, this is not for you. That's the first category of person we're going to be looking at. And on the other hand, we have people that have a lot of time but not necessarily very much uh, money. Maybe uh, you work a full-time job and you need all the money from your full-time job to pay your bills and take care of other things but you've got several hours every evening after work and weekends and stuff where you could play and have fun and do stuff like that you've got plenty of time but you don't have really much extra money that you want to spend on magic or magic online in particular so that's a person who has plenty of time not very much money that if you fall in that category this is for you now so we have the first category of, uh, which is you've got uh, you know, lots of money, not much time, not for you. Second category, you've got lots of time, not very much money, this is for you. Then we'll go ahead and say there's a third category, which is you've got a little bit of money and a little bit of time. Well, then this, this might be for you. It's probably worth checking out. You might not want to adopt every strategy that we're going to talk about because there's going to be some elements of what we're going to discuss that you might just be better off to spend a little bit of money and shortcut some of the really grindy aspects of what we're going to talk about. But you could probably still pick up some tips and tricks in this that will help you even if you're willing to spend a little bit of money uh, we're going to talk about some concepts that are going to help you get the most value out of the money that you do spend again this video is primarily for the type of person that has uh, you know a lot more time than, than money uh, and the central premise to a lot of what we're going to be talking about is that there's this spectrum between time and money and interestingly enough you might be thinking that if you don't have money that you're just out of luck that's completely untrue. You can actually replace a certain amount of money with time that you're willing to put in. So for those of you who didn't know that, it's an important premise in the kind of things we're going to be talking about over and over, that, that whole concept of if you don't have money, if you're willing to spend your time, you can get value. So just keep that in mind. It's going to come up all the time on this channel. Now that that's out of the way, let's go ahead and get started. So this is going to be a multi-part series where we're going to talk about how you take ten dollars you start off at the very bottom slowly working your way up and eventually grind your way into a one thousand dollar magic online account so step number one and video number one we're just going to talk about dipping our toes into how this all works where you can get started and we'll continue this over the next few videos first you gotta buy an account you have to open a magic online account so when you open a magic online account it's gonna cost ten dollars you can't really get around that unless you know a friend that used to play magic online and doesn't really play anymore and they're willing to give you their account or you just know someone at your local game shop that will do something weird like trade you their magic online account for a five dollar card or something like that I don't really suggest this for the following reason if that person changes their mind later uh, because it was originally account registered to them if they go through wizards customer support they'll probably be able to get that account back and you'll lose all your stuff so just for the peace of mind of knowing that you know you're, you're never gonna have to worry about losing your account I suggest you go ahead and just spend the ten dollars and get the account now if you're someone who you're getting this you're getting an account for free from somebody that you feel a hundred percent sure is never gonna try to come back and steal your stuff maybe it's your brother or your dad or something like that you know sure whatever you feel like but in general I recommend just going ahead and buying your own account just to be safe have that account registered to your email and and to you as a person and you're gonna be better off okay you buy an account you spend ten dollars what you're gonna get is listed on the wizards customer support website each new Magic Online account includes the following contents. 
five event tickets. Okay, so this is interesting. Let's take a minute to talk about this. You're going to spend ten dollars and you're going to get five event tickets. While we talk about stuff, for those of you not familiar with Magic Online, an event ticket is basically a dollar. If you go to the Magic Online uh, web store, every ticket that you buy will cost you a dollar. Now there are ways to get tickets a little bit, you know, sort of to get tickets or the equivalent of tickets uh, sometimes for cheaper than a dollar, but just as a sort of a shortcut and a general rule of thumb, we're gonna we're gonna basically use a, a singular event ticket and a singular dollar as interchangeable. So if I refer to five event tickets or five dollars, I basically mean the exact same thing. Here, when we spend ten dollars and get five event tickets, we're getting half of our value back in in the form of five event tickets, which covers five dollars of the ten dollars that we spent. So far, that's fine. Uh, the main thing I need to say about this five event tickets, and this is the most important part uh, of, of this little section of the video, do not spend the tickets on anything, you know, n not right away at least, okay? We're just going to keep those. Don't be tempted to go out and buy a booster pack or try to build your first popper deck or anything like that. These tickets are extremely valuable. We're not going to spend any more money. These five tickets are our investment capital. These are our vehicle to build our account. We have to use them extremely wisely. That means do not rush out and spend them. We'll talk about exactly how we're going to spend them and we have to be very careful to get the absolute maximum value because we don't have a lot of tickets. You're going to get 20 new player points and you can use these new player points to join events. Uh, specifically designated for players who are new to Magic Online. Okay, when you play those new player events, you'll have a chance basically to win some more player points. We're just going to go ahead and, and conservatively assume that when you play in those events, you get no prizes, it doesn't go well for you, and you don't get anything. Uh, maybe you do better than that, so somewhere down the road you're going to have more resources than someone else, but we'll just go ahead and assume that that doesn't go well for you. Uh, because, uh, you know, that way for those of you who it doesn't go well for you, you won't have to worry about already being behind on this guide. You're going to get some uh, avatars, which are kind of cute, but they're not really going to help us. They're not really worth anything. You're going to get over 800 cards added to your collection. Uh, but it's basically just a bunch of janky junk, and for the most part also is not really going to help you. Um, there's a whole list of uh, various... Uh, jank that you're going to get access to, but none of this is really going to help. At the end of the day, the only thing of real significant value that you're probably going to get is the five event tickets. So that's where we start. Now, what do we do with our five event tickets? Well, if you're someone that, you know, definitely has a lot more time than money, we're going to use these event tickets to, to just grind uh, events and a very particular kind of event. We're gonna we're gonna buy in and play penny dreadful player run events. Penny dreadful events are player run events that are free. They're completely free and they're super budget. There's also quite a few events every week so that's nice and if you do reasonably well in these events you can win prizes. So you can basically take these five tickets use them very wisely to, to pick up some viable penny dreadful decks and start playing in Penny Dreadful events for free. And you don't have to win, you just have to, I think, like make top four, uh, something like that, maybe top eight, um, not 100%. You can, you'll certainly find out as you start grinding. Um, and the decks are really cheap because the rule of the format is uh, the cards have to be worth basically a penny, I believe. And because there's so much fluctuation in prices, they have seasons, and I think it's every three or four months whenever a new set comes out they reevaluate the prices of cards and the format shifts things that become expensive fall out of the format things that have fallen down to a penny rotate into the format it's a little bit uh, tricky to keep up with but but we'll kinda talk about how you sort all of that out don't worry we'll, we'll get to all that in a minute if you're somebody who maybe has a little bit of time and a little bit of you know you're not as worried about like if you lost these tickets you could actually you know, deposit a little more money, buy some more tickets online, then we might take a different tact where we're going to spend maybe, uh, you know, three of our tickets to build decks and we're going to use the other two tickets to actually uh, invest and speculate in some cards on Magic Online that we think are going to have an opportunity to appreciate and be worth some, val some more value than what we paid for them 
reasonably quickly to flip those and start sort of having um, basically just you know buying and flipping cards to sort of build up some extra tickets that way um, but I don't necessarily recommend this if you know for sure that you are just gonna have a lot more time than money you might as well save all your ticket resources just for building penny dreadful decks um, if you're gonna be grinding a lot of penny dreadful events you want to be sure to have extra tickets in case the meta shifts and you need a different deck or if you just want to spice it up I mean after playing you know 10 20 30 events you might be bored of playing the same deck and want to try something else so uh, we're going to do a whole different video about really cheap, uh, how to identify really cheap, really good investments. If you've only got two or three tickets that you can invest, we're going to talk about the kind of speculative targets you should be looking for. But that's not what we're going to talk about today. Today we're going to talk about Penny Dreadful Player Run events. So what you do is, after you've purchased your account, you've got your five tickets, you've got all this other junk we don't really care about, I guess the basic lands are useful because you will need those to build decks, but they're not really worth anything. Uh, one of the things you need to know is there are certain bots online that will actually give you free cards, a limited number of free cards every day. If you go on to Magic Online and do a search for free bots, free cards, things along those lines, uh, I think MTGO Traders and maybe GoatBots has this program where every day you can get a limited number of free cards from certain bots and the cards are terrible but some of them might be playable in Penny Dreadful so that's something to keep in the back of your mind. Next we're gonna go to gatherling.com so that's gatherling.com g-a-t-h-e-r-l-i-n-g.com now you're gonna to need to sign up and create an account it works just like creating an account on most websites and places that you've probably visited on the internet you can see here I've created an account and I'm already logged in and I have played in a few Penny Dreadful events in the past um, I haven't really done a ton of Penny Dreadful because I you know certainly deposited some money back in in the beginning when I got started I had enough money on my account to go ahead and just buy up a handful of different popper decks and that's basically stage two of building our account if you are willing to spend you know fifty a hundred dollars to just go ahead and jump start the process you can completely bypass this stage where we're gonna grind free player run events and just get into popper and go ahead and start grinding popper leagues online but I don't, I mean, if you're not really familiar with Magic Online, if you're totally new, I don't really recommend that even if you have the money to spend because early on you're going to make some mistakes with the interface and getting used to how things play in Magic Online. So why not make those mistakes when you're playing in free events that you haven't paid anything to participate in so that you can make your mistakes and learn how the interface works and all that kind of stuff where there's really not much for you to lose. And buying a few Penny Dreadful decks is always worth it because it doesn't get much cheaper and the funny thing is when you're buying cards for one or two or three pennies uh, sometimes those cards go up and you accidentally make money on those cards I mean there's not much downside they can't get much cheaper um, so yeah alright so when you get to gatherling.com you create your account next there's a couple of different ways we can do this you can you'll see some upcoming events on the sort of the right hand side of the page and you'll see different types of events you're specifically looking for the penny dreadful events and you can click and open these events and take a look at them so we'll just open one of these really quickly and you'll see um, basically it's it's a website it's pennydreadfulmagic.com and slash tournaments you can also just go to pennydreadfulmagic.com you don't have to go through the gatherling.com website for this and I will include the URLs for the different websites I'm talking about in the show notes today I may not have those on the show notes right away I may, I, as soon as I get done making this video I have to go so the, the uh, links may not be up until next week uh, but uh, it's uh, gatherling.com and then pennydreadfulmagic.com when you go to pennydreadfulmagic.com, and sorry, the video is a little offset here, Let maybe I can, there we go. Um, you're going to find all the information you need to, to play Penny Dreadful. You're going to find out about the leagues, competition, you can get tournament info. When you click on tournament info, you're going to find out, here's an FAQ about uh, how to get started with Magic Online, so you can get more information there. Uh, how to check for card legality, how to find deck lists, um, how do I enter the league, how do I enter a tournament, you can also see the schedule for the tournaments. You'll see that they have um, 
a, a lot of different events going on. You can see Saturday, Sunday, two on Sunday, Monday, Thursday. I mean, this is very vibrant. It's not like you're going to be sitting around waiting all week just to get to play in one event. You're going to be able to play in four or five events probably every single week, which is pretty sweet because, again, these events actually have prizes. Okay, so here's the prize payout. So check this out. They actually, okay, I thought it was just fourth place. They actually pay prizes out all the way through eighth place, which is which is basically kind of amazing because there's there's usually not like a ton of players, shockingly, that actually play in these events. Um, it's not surprising to only see 20 or 30 players show up to play in these events. So just imagine, you've got to make eighth place to get a free ticket. Now, they don't actually give you the ticket. What they do is you win prize credit on bots where you can get cards. Uh, particularly Card Hoarder. And Card Hoarder has a nice selection of cards. They basically have everything. And since you're trying to build an account, getting a one ticket credit on Card Hoarder is basically the same thing as having a ticket because what you need is the ability to accumulate and amass, um, uh, you know, cards. So this is, this is going to work out very well for you. And let's say only, let's say that 24 people show up for an event. That means 25% of the players are going to get prizes. That is incredible. I mean, that's great. That means you don't even have to be an amazing player. You you, you know, uh, you, you probably have to do decently well and, and bring a decent deck, but as long as you can play, you know, reasonably well and bring a decent deck, if you if you're playing in, you know, 3 4 5 events every week, um, you're going to you're going to slowly be accumulating credits on card hoarder. That means you're going to slowly be able to pick up more cards. And there's two different strategies you can use. Um, you can take sort of a conservative approach, which is you can try to build your Penny Dreadful uh, card base so that you'll be able to play a lot of the different decks and then after that start accumulating popper staples. Or you can just have enough uh, cards in the Penny Dreadful space that you can play one or two decks, maybe three, and then start using all your other credits to immediately start grinding into popper decks. I'm not going to say one's better or worse than the other, whatever you feel comfortable with. Um, after that, um, we will uh, eventually, once you get your popper decks all set up and you're able to, uh, eventually what you'll have to do is you'll probably end up spending most all of your tickets uh, just, just accumulating cards. So you're not going to have any tickets left on your account. You probably won't have enough play points to get into an event. And just so you know, uh, play points are just an alternative currency to tickets. To get into events on Magic Online, official events, normally you have to spend tickets. However, you can also spend play points. And basically, 10 play points is the same thing as a ticket. So you'll see drafts, for example, that cost either 12 tickets or 120 play points. So 10 points is basically a ticket. Uh, and a ticket is basically a dollar. However, play points can only be used for events, whereas a lot of bots will accept tickets for cards. Play points cannot be spent to acquire cards. Tickets can be spent to acquire cards. So tickets are basically better than play points, but play points are useful. Anyway, after you've been grinding these Penny Dreadful events for a pretty long time, eventually you're going to accumulate enough extra credits at Card Hoarder to buy all the cards you need for some Popper decks. After you've got all your cards for Popper decks and you've got enough Penny Dreadful decks, then you're going to have a different goal. Your goal is going to be to get credits on Card Hoarder you're going to use those credits to buy cards that you're not going to keep. You're just going to try to acquire cards that you can turn around and sell for tickets. I mean, you may literally be picking the cards up from Card Hoarder and immediately selling the cards right back to Card Hoarder to convert those credits into tickets. And then once you have the card pool you need to play Popper, uh, events, leagues cost eight tickets. So once you have all your cards and you have I would say you don't want to like have exactly eight tickets. I would want to have a little extra cushion. So maybe 16 tickets or 14 tickets, somewhere in there, 20 tickets, whatever you feel comfortable with. I wouldn't want to spend my very last ticket um, hopping in a league. But once you have, you know, let's say 16 tickets, you go and spend eight tickets to hop in your first popper league. And now, you know, if that goes well, you're off to the races grinding popper leagues. Should things go sour, you have a bad run, you run out of tickets or play points grinding popper leagues, well, you can always fall back on Penny Dreadful. So that's another reason why it might be useful to have a nice card base, because if you run out of luck, you can always go back to Penny Dreadful to grind your way back up. Okay, So this should give you hope. I mean, for those of you that didn't know that you could actually build an account basically without spending any additional money and that there are ways 
to accumulate free resources just from playing Magic. And you also get to do it in sort of a wonky, fun, offbeat format that you otherwise would never get to participate in or enjoy. And it's a rotating, updating format that stays fresh and vibrant. I mean, there's a lot of fun, exciting things here for you if you uh, weren't otherwise already aware of this stuff. So anyway, um, the other thing you need to know is in addition to pennydreadfulmagic.com, where they have all kinds of information, um, also you can go to uh, metagame archetype on that same website. And then after that, it's, let's see here, it's going to eventually load a bunch of different archetypes. So you can sort of see what the different options are in the metagame to decide what your first deck is going to be. And you'll see they provide a ton of statistics and information, including win percentage and all this kind of stuff, so you can get an idea of what's actually good. Keep in mind, because it's a rotating format, uh, just keep an eye on, on whether any of the decks that, you know, uh, might be old and haven't really been removed from the site and aren't legal in, in the same current form. When you're looking at these, they also break down some uh, stuff into aggro and control and stuff like that. So we're just going to click on one of these archetypes. This is Cloud Post Control. And they even provide you with information about the most commonly used cards. And, uh, and that's pretty handy. Now, one of the other things we can do is we can click on Resources. And let's see here. We can check on a deck check. This is another thing that's important to know. You can actually paste your deck list into Penny Dreadful and then they can just click check your deck and you'll be able to find out if anything is illegal so that's that's a nice way to deck check everything they also have this part here which cards are legal the best way to search legal cards is with scryfall so scryfall is another cool website that's super handy if you're not sure if a card is legal or not um, you can do a search by format for penny dreadful or you can just check any particular card by just plugging the name of the card into the search engine and Scryfall will actually tell you the formats it is legal in and not legal in, and this is super cool, including Penny Dreadful, which they abbreviate as Penny. Okay, so Scryfall.com is a place that you can actually check any card to verify for sure whether it's legal in Penny Dreadful or not. Okay, so Scryfall.com, that's another useful resource that we need to keep an eye on. Now, next up, um, you can go to competition and competition results and the internet's being a little bit slow today uh, you can also check this is cool because you can lo look at some of the most recent stuff in time so we can see something an event that occurred a day ago we can see what what did well and the cool thing is you can actually click like when you see what had the best record here Jund wildfire you can click on that and boom you can get a deck list breaks down everything including mana costs and get this it'll even show you precisely how the deck did against other archetypes so there's just so much information that you can do a lot of research uh, before you decide uh, what you're going to actually buy into for your first deck whatever you go with they're all going to be reasonably inexpensive again some of these cards are worth more than a penny uh, because they go up in price before the season ends but these decks still tend to be relatively inexpensive with your first five tickets you should be able to buy several decks and you'll be off to the races I do recommend trying to maybe only spend two or three tickets on your first deck or two and then saving a few tickets so after you've played Penny Dreadful for a while if you decide you need to you know reroute and and use a completely different deck after after experiencing the format you'll have a little you'll have some funds left to readjust and, and build that deck list after you've been trying the format for a while. Another thing you can do is you can go to gathering.com and you can actually uh, find on upcoming events you can see for example uh, you can click on some of these events and you'll see the next upcoming event on Saturday and then you can click on how do I enter and you can click sign up and you'll just kind of work your way through the links and you'll figure out how to how to get going also another thing you can do is on the gathering website you can click on metagame and then on format you'll look your way down somewhere in here let's see here somewhere in here they have a ton of different formats and these are all player run events by the way um, they I think I don't know if they're still running but occasionally I know there have been uh, popper uh, formats that have that have been running as well let's take a look here they've got uh, yeah they've got some popper events that run so once you build your popper decks in addition to being able to play popper leagues you can also you know mix it up a little bit by playing in these um, 
these popper free play run events. Gatherling is just a sweet website. Play run events are awesome. And you can use Gatherling as your resource to keep up with play run events. Now also while we're here real quick um, at the metagame review, you'll notice that a recent Penny Dreadful event had 15 players. This is amazing! The top eight get paid! That means you have an over 50% chance if you're at least as good as, if you're at least as, as average, on average, if you're about as good as all the other players in the event, probably and you bring a decent deck you've got about a 50 percent shot to get to to get paid and that is just just i don't even know that just blows my mind to be honest i mean we're not talking about making a ton of tickets your ev just for your time is probably better admittedly in the leagues once you have the cards but if you're just starting out and you don't have a lot uh you know look at these uh 20 players 14 players i mean this is this is you know this is just incredible in terms of you don't have to like it's not like you know for any of you who may have experienced trying to like grind value in poker if you play in a free lo a free tournament for poker online there will be thousands of players because anything that's free on the internet that can get you you know money or something that has some kind of monetary value it's like everybody you know shows up for that but you know these player run events and gathering is still relatively obscure and a lot of the a lot of the enfranchised players can get better EV playing in the events online, and a lot of the disenfranchised players who aren't playing in Magic Online don't know about these player run events. So this stuff just slips through the cracks, and it creates an incredible opportunity uh, for anybody out there who you know you know wishes they could build a Magic Online account but just doesn't have a ton of money. Anyway, anyway, so you can click on format, and we will scroll around through here. We were looking for Penny Dreadful. And here we go, we've got, there's a couple of different Penny Dreadfuls here. We'll just kind of click on one of these and filter. Uh, that looks like we picked the wrong one. I guess maybe an easier way to do it, although it, it's not gonna give you all the information, is just to click here. And you can actually see the Penny Dreadful Sunday, Thursday, Monday, Saturday. Just know you'll need to look at all of these because you're not getting the complete information because you're just looking at one of the events that recurs on a particular day. So if you click on Sunday, filter events, boom, you're going to be able to see all the Penny Dreadful Sunday events. You can click on those events and scroll down and you can actually see the breakdowns right here for how those tournaments played out, um, including, or I guess at least including the top four. You might not, I don't know if you can see the whole event, um, how it played out, but you will be able to see the final rankings. Wow, looks like, I don't know if this only had, wow, looks like this may have only had 14 players. Is that right? That's crazy. Yeah, 14 players. Eight of them got paid. <laughs> it's amazing! Anyway, top four, you can actually see how that played out and see who won. You can see first, second, and tied for fourth. So, yeah, it looks like because there was such a, a low number of players, they just broke the top four. And I don't know, maybe if, if when that happens, maybe they only pay out tickets to the top four. I have no idea, honestly, exactly how that works. But it wouldn't surprise me if they actually pay out to other players who don't even make the top four. Again, not 100% on how that works. But, uh, you know, either way, even still, it's still pretty sweet value. So, yeah, that, I mean, I know that's a ton of information. I was talking fast because, I mean, we're almost at 30 minutes. There's just a ton of information to digest. And if I didn't go fast, you know, this video would run an hour. So, you know, uh, if, if, if I went too fast for anything, go back, listen to the everything again. Um, you can always pause, go back. If you want me to elaborate on anything in more detail, um, and cover anything maybe a little bit slower in a review uh, just leave a comment or you know if it's something I can just answer in a, in a question leave a comment and ask anything you need but this is your first step this is your first step to spending ten dollars never spending another dollar and grinding your way into building a thousand dollar magic online account without ever spending another dollar after you drop that first ten dollars to buy your account the key is again we're going to be uh, very careful in how we spend those five tickets that we get because that's got to take us the distance so buy maybe one penny dreadful deck do a lot of research study the gatherling.com website uh, study the penny dreadful magic.com website that has tons of information tons of statistics about decks how they perform their win percentages study all that stuff figure out the type of archetype that you prefer to play so you feel comfortable and you're having fun you don't want this to be miserable because you're going to be playing a lot of penny dreadful if you're going to grind from nothing to the top so you know find a deck that's in your archetype that you enjoy and then find a list that's done well within that archetype 
and go out and buy it and get to rocking and rolling. I guess one of the last things I should mention is to actually plan these events, you actually sign up and register through the gatherling.com website. You'll copy paste your deck list that you're going to be using into uh, the gatherling website. You Again, you will have to register on the gatherling website. And uh, once that's done, after you do your first event, it might take you a little bit of adjustment getting used to how that registration process starts. So don't show up. Do not show up, you know, 5, 10, or even 15 minutes before the event starts thinking you're going to sign up and register and get your deck set up and go buy your cards. That's not going to work, you know, you know, at least a day before the event even happens. You know, do, you know get your deck purchased, uh, and you're going to go ahead and and uh, get registered for the event, get signed up on the gatherling.com website. So you're logged in, you get signed up for an event, you paste your deck list in. So, so when the event's going to start, you're actually ready to go. Um, the other thing is, if you go to the, uh, the pennydreadfulmagic.com website, uh, when we go to competitions, let's see here, tournament information, you probably are like, well, where do I even go? Um, so when you when you click on how do I enter the league, let's see here, uh, somewhere, okay, so they play these leagues um, in the just for fun with the Penny Dreadful League tag, and usually there's a particular chat channel that everybody hangs out in, so you can keep out with what's going on, and somewhere, somewhere on this website, uh, you should be, let's see, how do I get a game and find other Penny Dreadful players. Um, so to get a match in Magic Online, go to Constructed Open Play. Just for fun on MTGO and create a freeform game with Penny Dreadful in the comments. To find Penny Dreadful community, join the Discord. And they actually have a link. So you can actually get on the Discord and start talking to people from, you know, if you just hang out in the Discord, eventually someone will come along that'll get you keyed in on what, what the relevant uh, in-game channels are to check out and all that kind of stuff. Um, and I guess another thing you're going to need to know is like logistically, once you have an account set up, how you actually go and buy your cards from the bots, how you actually engage in trading your tickets for cards, how you actually get your first deck purchased from a bot. And uh, we'll, we'll probably talk about that in our next video because we'll also be talking about uh, how you would buy and sell cards with bots and that kind of thing in case you're going to be using a ticket or two to do some speculating to try to grow some funds that way while you're competing in events. So yeah, I think that's pretty much it for today. Um, tune in next time. We will talk about more about the uh, you know particular types of speculative investments you can do if you just have a ticket or two to spend we need things that are going to be safe that will get us hopefully relatively quick returns not huge returns but quick small returns and also we'll be able to talk about how to buy and sell cards through bots and all that good stuff so that'll be coming up next time on our next video Again, if you have any questions, comments, if there's something I skipped over that, that you're you're thinking, you know, like, hey, Birdman, MSP, I need to know about this particular thing that you didn't even talk about in the sign-up process or how I got my account or, you know, where do I even check for my tickets? Don't worry, we'll cover that next time. All the stuff that is just kind of getting used to the interface and getting used to how to buy and sell and navigate and get your deck and play your games and all that stuff. We'll do a brief overview in the next video of some of those kind of things. If you're already familiar with Magic Online, um, don't worry, the video isn't just going to be covering basic stuff you already know. We're also going to talk about, again, some of these low-grade uh, cards that we can speculate in to make a little bit of money, but should be fairly safe. Um, in addition to all of that, yeah, if you have any general questions, just uh, leave a comment. And in the meantime, I hope that uh, some of this information uh, will help you go out and uh, grind up some free value to uh, help you get going on Magic Online. Until next time, this is Budget Magic, signing off. Peace!